Good day everyone, good day netizens. So today we'll be talking about the electrical conductivity in our semiconductors. So electrons and holes in our semiconductors are charged particles. Since they are charged particles, they will be influenced by an external electric field. So for example, we have an electron and a hole here. If we put it in an electric field like so, this is the positive and negative, your electron will move towards the positive side and your hole will move towards the negative side. So, galing yan sa Coulomb's law. And the uh, current produced by the movement of these uh, charge carriers, yung electrons and holes natin, is the our drift current. And the drift current tells us how good a conductor a material is. And this is related to the density of mobile electrical charge carriers in our solid and how efficiently these charge carriers move in our solid. So to describe electrical conductivity in solids, we can look at the Drude model. We can think of the Drude model as an application of the kinetic theory of gases, but now instead of using gas particles, we have electrons in our crystal. So, ang assumptions ni Drude model is that electrons uh, in a form of our gas of electrons is a free-moving particle in space with momentum and energy. They are subject to instantaneous collisions with other electrons or nuclei or imperfections in our solids. We also know from the Drude model, it can be assumed that the probability of collision increases with the time frame that we are considering. And the particles will only reach their thermal equilibrium only through our collisions. So basically, electrons are bouncing around in our solid, colliding with anything that it touches. With that, we can consider now that an electron with an electrical charge, negative Q, in a uniform external electric field, E, the force exerted in this electron will then be equal to following. F is equal to negative QE. So you already derived that from physics. And we know that our force is also equal to mass times acceleration or in this case, mass times dV over dt or the change in velocity with respect to time. This relation implies that the acceleration of the electron is constant and that the velocity will increase with time. But in reality, collision events will prevent the uh, indefinite increase of our velocity with time since they will always change in, uh, they will constantly change in direction yung electrons natin pag nag-collide siya with other scattering centers. Now, let us define current density. Current density, this is a vector parallel to the flow of the charge and is equal to the amount of electrical charges. So in this case, in this figure, these are electrical charges natin, yung electrons, passing through perpendicularly through a unit area. So this is our unit area here. Per time. The current density can be determined by calculating the number of electrons which will pass through this area through in a time interval dt and the formula for our current density will then be equal to j is equal to negative n qv where n is the concentration for electrons q is the charge of the electron and v is the average velocity of the electrons since electrons in a solid move not only in one direction they move in all directions so we take the average of these ones since <laughs> Yung ay, electrons natin due to the different collisions would have different velocities. To calculate this average velocity of our electrons, we can now introduce the electron relaxation time, tau. The electron relaxation time is defined as the average duration between two consecutive collisions or scattering events involving our electrons. So, in our solids, usually, this is a very small time frame. 10 to the negative 12 to 10 to the negative 14 seconds. And the probability of a collision happening 
will then be equal to or they'll then be proportional to the reciprocal of this electron relaxation time. Since we know that increasing the time would increase uh, the probability of a collision. The average velocity of our electrons could then be uh, obtained by integration. This one. So this average velocity is actually what we call our drift velocity or the collective velocity of our electrons going to either one side or the other. Integrating this expression, so this expression ang galing lang yan from our expression to the force. This is from m dv over dt is equal to qe. Nipat lang natin m sa kabila. We have this one. Integrating from 0 to v drift and from 0 to tau, we would get that your drift velocity would then be equal to negative q tau over m times e, where m is the effective mass of our electrons, q is the elementary charge, tau is the relaxation time, and e is the applied external electric field. The drift velocity here, we can then see that it is proportional to the electric field strength such that we can express itong negative Q, itong QTM natin as a single variable which we would call mu. So yung negative QTM natin, naging mu lang siya. And this mu is what we call the mobility of our electrons in a solid. The drift current density ah sorry. So yung mu natin this is useful in characterizing our semiconductors. This is usually a uh, material property. Then from this expression of your drift velocity relating to the uh, mobility of electrons in a solid, relating to the uh, external electric field, we can see that the drift current density then becomes this one. J drift is equal to negative NQ V drift, but we know that V drift is equal to M mu E, and mu E is equal to this one. We can see that the current density is then proportional to the electric field strength. And this proportionality constant is our... This is your conductivity. So this is the conductivity of our material. And the conductivity of our material will then be equal to negative N... Ah, sorry. NQ mu or equal to NQ squared tau over M where mu is the mobility of our electrons in our solid, q is the elementary charge, and tau, tau is the electron relaxation time. This expression, itong j is equal to sigma e natin, this is actually your Ohm's law. You're more familiar with Ohm's law na v is equal to ir, but kaya natin ma-derive ito mula dito. And I leave the derivation to you guys. So since sigma is the conductivity of our uh, material, we also know that from physics, meron din tayong resistivity. And yung resistivity natin is just the reciprocal of sigma or conductivity. We'll have ito. Resistivity is equal to the reciprocal of our conductivity or 1 over nq mu of our charge carrier. In this discussion though, we only look at the electrons. Sa semiconductors, alam natin there are two types of charge carriers. We have electrons and holes. So thus, there will then be two separate contributions to our drift current. Meron tayong contribution due to our electrons here and due to our holes here. For electrons and holes, ito yung ating uh, drift current ang ating drift velocity drift velocity and drift current for both and take note that our holes flow in the same direction as electric field kaya dito makita natin positive tong mu natin uh, positive mu h e siya kasi positive with the electric field si holes then 
putting back our expressions for j drift e and j drift h or the current density of our electrons and holes in our material back into this expression here we would get <coughs> that the total current uh, total drift current density for semiconductors can then be written as eto, j drift is equal to sigma e where sigma is equal to sigma o times n mu e plus p mu h where mu e and mu h are the mobilities of your electrons and holes in our semiconductor. So makita natin dito that the conductivity of a material depends on the following factors. One, you can see that the carrier mobility will be dependent, or sorry, the conductivity will be dependent on the number of charge carriers or yung ating concentration. We also see that our our carrier mobility this one or our conductivity will depend on our carrier mobility the carrier mobility in our solids this characterizes how quickly an electron can move through our material making it a very important property when we consider a semiconductor since this basically tells us uh, an idea on how conducting our material is. From the equation, mu is equal to q tau over m, we can see that the carrier mobility, mu is dependent on the effective mass, and our electron or our charge carrier relaxation time, tau. In a previous module, we already saw that the effective mass of an electron is dependent on the curvature of our band diagram. So now we consider the momentum lifetime or the relaxation time. In general, the momentum lifetime or the relaxation time of our material is determined by a scattering events in our system. In general, uh, Increasing the relaxation time, well, makita increases the uh, carrier mobility for solids. And alam natin yung relaxation time or momentum lifetime natin. This is just the amount of time in average in between collisions for our electron. So there are two different types of collision or scattering processes that we consider for our electrons. Pero tayo ng elastic and inelastic scattering. The elastic scattering is when yung elastic collision. From your physics, elastic collision means there's only a change in our momentum for our electron. Yung energy niya is the same. Meanwhile, for inelastic scattering, carrier changes in both momentum and energy. Do, do take note for the whole system, laging conserve yung electron, uh, yung energy, and momentum. Elastic scattering are scattering events in which they are caused by breaks in transitional symmetry of the solid, such as impurities, defects, interfaces, and dislocations. <coughs> by nature, uh, when a charge carrier interacts with these uh, imperfections in our solids, magkakaroon ka ng elastic scattering in which the energy ng ating particle hindi magbabago, but its momentum might change, usually by a change in its direction. Meanwhile, ang inelastic scattering naman natin, this is caused mainly by the interaction of our electrons with particles that have uh, energies like our lattice vibrations or our phonons. So in an inelastic scattering process, this is caused again by our lattice vibrations, makita natin that for our uh, in elastic scattering process, the momentum and the energy again of a material, the total energy and momentum of a material must be conserved, but the uh, momentum and energy of our charge carrier can change. So in this case, for the momentum, the momentum of our K, uh, of our particle before and after, will then be equal to this one, k prime is equal to k plus minus q. And 
yung energy natin, the energy of the particle after scattering process will be equal to the energy of the particle before the scattering process plus or minus the energy of the phonon absorbed or emitted depending on the nature of our interaction. Since in general, our solid will have two types of phonons, there will then be also two types of electron phonon scattering process. We have the electron acoustic phonon scattering, which occurs in all solids, since all solids have an acoustic phonon. And we have the electron optical phonon scattering, which occurs in solids with optical phonons. So, din describe lang natin tong different scattering process, since we want to have a total parang pwede natin pag-add-add yung different scattering process nyo kasi these different scattering processes may interact with their electrons which will change its uh, carrier lifetime. So the total carrier lifetime of a charge carrier can then be obtained by adding all these or by, tama, by adding all these uh, scattering process. Uh, so the total carrier lifetime tau can then be obtained by this equation 1 over tau will then be equal to 1 over tau elastic plus 1 over tau optical plus 1 over tau acoustic. So we just basically added the effects of the different scattering process since the total yan to all the scattering process. And from there, we can get a total carrier lifetime. And it was observed that at very low temperatures, we will see that our phonon modes are frozen out. Ito nawawala. Ito nawawala. Since konti lang yung phonons natin in very low temperatures, hindi siya ma-activate ng thermal energy natin. Nangyari is that the tau optical and tau acoustic becomes very large. It becomes inconsequential in our total carrier lifetime. And we can see that at very low temperatures, elastic scattering processes tend to dominate. So I'll stop here. In the next video, I'll talk about the um, Hall effect in our semiconductor. So thank you for listening and hope to hope you have a wonderful day today.